Hello, this is Caleb with God's Loving Sacrifice Podcast, where we talk about the Word of God and how it helps us get through today's world. I hope you learn and grow as you listen. Merry Christmas. We want to talk about today, what is a man? And we're not talking about it like the information we've been seeing lately about what is a woman. I'm talking about what is a man in God's eyes. In the Old Testament, he picked David, he you know, he picked Moses and Noah and all those that we see do mighty things in the Old Testament. But what man did he choose to be the father for his son? And that was Joseph. We hear so much about Mary and the Immaculate Birth and all the things about her and watching her son die. But Joseph, what about Joseph? But Mary was the chosen one. So was Joseph. God chose Joseph. And you know, Joseph was just a man. And when... He found that Mary was with child. There were so many things he could have done. He could have humiliated her. He could have had her stoned, put her away. But what did he do? In Matthew 1, 18 through 25, it says, Now the birth of Jesus was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being just a man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about this thing, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. So all this was done, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him took to him his wife, and did not know her until she had brought forth their firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. He didn't have to listen to that angel. God gives us free will. But that was the man that God chose to be the earthly father for his child. We put so much emphasis on Mary because we see her throughout the scriptures. We don't see a lot about Joseph. But yet you do. You see it in Jesus. He was a carpenter. Joseph was a carpenter. Who picked him up when he fell? I'm sure Joseph did. Who taught him to be a carpenter? Joseph did. Who showed him how to be a man of God. Joseph did. When he was a child, he did things, and I'm sure that he got in a little trouble, and I'm sure that there were times when Joseph didn't know what to do, but he knew that God trusted him with his son. Did Joseph just take Mary as his wife and say, okay, I've done it and I've done my duty and I'm finished with anything else? No. If you go to the second chapter of Matthew verses 13 through 15, you'll find where it says, now when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. 
When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Again, this wasn't Joseph's child. He could have not listened to the angel. He could have stayed there. But no, because he was a man of God, because he was raised to do what God commanded, he took Jesus and Mary and went to Egypt. We spend so much time giving credit to ourselves for things that we've done. I know that we all boast at times. I used to manage a million-dollar trust for a company. And I used to say, yeah, I'm in charge of a million-dollar trust. Think of Joseph. He was in charge of God's son. What do we have to brag about? And he was a man who answered God, who stood up for Jesus and for Mary and showed them love. It was very moving when you think about it. There isn't a lot known about Joseph. He wasn't written about the way Mary was. He wasn't held in awe like they did Mary, like they still do Mary. He was a quiet man who taught Jesus as a child, who was concerned with him. And who loved him, who showed him how to be a man. It says in Luke 2, 25 through 35, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the customs of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed him and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people in Israel. Joseph, his mother, marveled at the things which were spoken of them. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. Joseph was there with them. Joseph was amazed, just like Mary was amazed. They knew who the child was, but they were still amazed when God showed him over and over again. So what is a man? A man is someone who listens to God. A man is someone who blesses his wife, who raises his child to know the words of God, to know the ways of God. That's a man. A man isn't a person who can open lids that are too tight or uh, drive a truck or Any of the things that sometimes we look at men to be, God looks at men's hearts. God looks at men's souls. And Joseph was his ideal man, the man that he would use to raise his child. So this Christmas, Think about Joseph. 
If you have an adopted child, think of the love that you have for that child and know that that was the love that Joseph had for Jesus. And remember Jesus. That little baby that came for our salvation. Hi, this is Gayla. Today, I want to tell you a story. First, to let you know, I'm starting another podcast. And this podcast is going to be on lost and forgotten music, hymns, and artists. I think you all know, listening to me in my podcast, I love music. And after the first of the year, I will get my new podcast started. But I thought I'd give you a little hint of what my podcast is going to be about. In 1865, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day was published. We've all heard of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. He wrote The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. But he quit writing for a while. He was living during the Civil War, and his wife died in a tragic fire. And he even wrote in his journal how inexpressibly sad are all holidays. A few years after that, his son went into the war. And Henry Wadsworth Longfellow had a deep conviction against violence, but his son went anyway. And in 1863, he found out that his son had been injured. So he went, like any good parent would go, and looked for his son and found him. And the conditions were very poor. So he had him transported back to Boston to his home to take care of his son. And that year at Christmas in 1863, while caring for his son, he wrote a poem. And in this poem, if you listen to the words, which I'm going to let you know what they are, they build a picture of light and of dark and of light. And the poem went... I heard the bells on Christmas Day their old familiar carols play, and mild and sweet the words repeat, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. And thought how as the day has come, the belfries of all Christendom, I'd rolled along the unbroken song, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. Till ringing singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day, a voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then from each black accursed mouth the cannon thundered in the south. With the sound the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. It was as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of the continent. When made forlorn, the household born of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. His son Charlie eventually got better. And nine years later, a composer named John Baston Calkin wrote a tune, and it was used for I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. I think they called it the Christmas Bells at that time. But There was another composer who wrote music for it. But then, in 1956, Johnny Marks composed music for it, and Bing Crosby recorded it. And that's been the tune that most of us all know that's been played. 
In fact, in 2008, Casting Crowns got their eighth number one hit with it. The only difference with theirs is they did add a, add a chorus to it. This is the story of I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And I want to tell you many more stories about many more songs and the artists that sang them. I hope you enjoyed that. Any comments, just let me know. You can comment on Facebook and let me know how you like the idea of the new podcast. Thanks for listening to my sample and have a Merry Christmas. I pray that you enjoyed today's episode. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave a message by contacting me on the website at www.godslovingsacrifice.com. And while you're there, you can catch up on all the other episodes, check out the reviews, and even read the blog. You can also leave a comment on Facebook at God's Loving Sacrifice. Thank you for spending time with us today. And until next time, may God richly bless and keep you.